Well, welcome everyone to the Eastside Freedom Library or the virtual world of the Eastside Freedom Library. I'm Peter Ratcliffe, uh, the co-executive director. Um, this is a very special evening for us uh, and for everyone involved. Um, for the last seven and a half years, uh, the Eastside Freedom Library has been insisting that art is a powerful vehicle to build solidarity, to tell stories, to connect people together. Tonight is a manifestation of that. And for the last seven and a half years, we have been building our relationships with the local Karen community. Um, and they are a very important part of our life and work here at the Eastside Freedom Library. And we care deeply with them about their families and friends and relatives who still live in Myanmar and are trying to find a life of justice and peace. So this is a great step for us and we're delighted that you're joining us. Uh, tonight's program is entitled Body Response, Artists and the Civil Disobedience Movement in Myanmar. And we have two very special artists who are going to share some of their work with us. One is Cha A. Thien, uh, who was born in Yangon and now lives and works in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Cha A is a multidisciplinary artist. Her work encompasses painting, installation and performance that thinks with the contradictions of her socio-political environment. She's been the recipient of numerous awards and fellowships. Her work has been exhibited or performed in London, in New York, um, and in Singapore, among other places. And now we can say in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, Mo Sat, who is coming to us tonight from Myanmar, uh, explores self identity, embodiment, and politics and political resistance in a practice spanning performance, photography, sculpture, and video and sound installations. His work has also been performed and exhibited in multiple locations including Hong Kong, London, Busan, South Korea. Um, and we are just so delighted that he is joining us tonight, uh, as well as, as Cha A, who is here at the library. And another very important participant in this evening's program is Tun Mint, uh, who is an associate professor of political science at Carleton College in Northfield. He was a student leader in the 1968 democracy movement uh, in Myanmar um, and is a member of the, was a member of the technical advisory team of the Federal Constitution Drafting Coordinating Committee. Um, Professor Mint is going to handle uh, a post-show conversation with the two artists. And while we have all of you out there in the audience, muted in terms of your mics and your video. We want to invite you to use the chat function in Zoom uh, to send in questions or comments, which I will relay to the artists and to Professor Mint. Um, and if you're watching on Facebook, please use the comment function and we will get to your questions and comments as well. So I wanna now introduce my new colleague in this project, uh, Aaron Gleason. Uh, and Aaron uh, is the director of FD13. And she'll tell us a bit about that organization. And she's teaching in the interdisciplinary studies program at the University of Minnesota. She was a founder of Sasa Basak in Phnom Penh, um, where she lived for a number of years before coming here uh, to Minnesota. 
He is a curator and writer. And I think like our artist tonight, someone who works in multiple genres and disciplines. So Aaron, uh, if you take would. it from there, please. Thank you, Peter. Um, as Peter said, I'll introduce um, FD13 a bit before moving on to the program. Um, I am very newly appointed as director with a really generous board of directors to this organization. FD13 is a residency for the arts that invites national and international multidisciplinary artists to Minnesota to create new experimental work and present it live. We were founded in 2016. We are an itinerant program. We have no architectural footprint. Therefore, we collaborate and we foreground that collaboration, hospitality, and experimentation, working closely with local partners here in Minnesota and abroad um, to um, uh, across wide ranging fields of thought to craft individuated residencies that provide artist fees, living and working space, and site specific research and production support for that new work here. Visiting artists are invited to bring their ideas in relation with the past, present, and futures specific to Minnesota's human and more than human realms conjuring dynamic relations amongst multiple audiences through both formal and informal talks, screenings, performances, meals, workshops, and more. And we culminate with a live event that brings each um, residency to a close. Um, so for this residency, as Peter said, we are so blessed to have two artists, one our first remote artist in residence, Mosat in Yangon and Cha'i um, here with us in the Twin Cities. Um, before moving on, I wanted to first acknowledge um, the ancestral, traditional, and contemporary lands that we are on as Dakota. Um, here at the Eastside Freedom Library, we're up high on lands called Imniza Ska, or the White Bluffs, very close to the sacred burial sites and Wakan Tipi. Thank you to our host, really an incredible place I'm in. You can see how beautiful it is, the Eastside Freedom Library. Um, who has helped me resettle at home, um, carrying so many histories of this place and others. Um, so this is our first collaboration with FD13 um, with the Eastside Freedom Library. And I wanna just name also the team here that's been really generous, including Peter Ratcliffe, uh, Carla Reilly, Clarence White, Bailey Ethier, Taylor Guccioni, David McAllister, and Shen Xing. So thank you so much for working together to make this possible. Um, of course, thanks to the artists and to Tun Mint for joining us too. Tonight's program includes, um, we'll start with about a 15 minute performance with Cha Yi. Her work is titled, We Equals 10,184 Plus Bodies to Body. This is taking place downstairs here at the library. This will be followed by about a 10 minute participatory performance called F and F or Face and Fingers by Mossad, live streaming from his living room in Yangon. Following these performances, uh, Don Mint and myself will um, begin a conversation with the artists and following that, we hope that you will join with your own questions. So before we begin the performances, I want to introduce these two works that inspired this program tonight. Created independently of one another, the performances share in common the centering of the artist's bodies through sequential choreography as a technology of solidarity. These performances were both made in the aftermath of the 2007 Saffron Revolution, an uprising with strong ties to the 1988 and 2021 calls for democratic reforms specific to Myanmar. While both performances are considered iconic to Myanmar's art histories, now about over a decade old, um, they alert us to the power of art and artists today during the unprecedented multi-ethnic civil disobedience movement across Myanmar and its diasporas since the military took power on the 1st of February this year. In Cha Yi's performance, which was first performed in 2010, she moves through a body sequence based on a torture manual used in Myanmar's prisons, self-inflicting a choreography intended to violently strain the body, mind, and spirit. 
She foregrounds strength and perseverance to honor those who remained in prison after her release. Um, and also at the time of its conception, those who remained in prison then and today. Most soft performance FNF documents the artist striking and transitioning between 108 poses that focus on his head and hands. This is a secularization of mudras or hand gestures sacred to Dharmic religions deities. It's rebelling against co-opting practices in militarized Myanmar. FNF is equally a document of the artist's early exploration of conceptual artistic languages relation to censorship, inscribing through the body a language of the people, everyday deities striving to commune and communicate free from military rule. Together, these performances celebrate differential artistic vocabularies of resistance that are related to the political rendering of their bodies and personhoods, Mossad in country, Cha'i in exile. The performances in relation to here uh, in the east side St. Paul become really poignant as the city that has become home, as Peter said, to the largest Karen community in the United States, who alongside many of Minnesota's Kareni and Moan, refugee communities and allies are active in solidarity and liberation movements from here across Myanmar. So with that, um, I'd like to turn it over to our crew downstairs for Cha E Tin's performance, We 10,184 Bodies to Body, followed by Mossad's performance, FNF Face and Fingers. Thank you.
Thank you, Chai. And we will move to the performance uh, with Mossad, um, which may Mossad turn uh, participatory. So we'll see and let him guide us.
Thank you, Mofat, for re-performing that uh, with us, with all of us. And thank you, everybody, for joining. I wanted to uh, start this discussion um, with a question um, for this last performance, start with Mossat. Um, I will begin and Son will follow, and then we will have uh, Cha join us. Um, so I'd like to begin, um, Mossad and I have been speaking uh, regularly recently and thinking about this particular work. Um, I wanted to quote him. Um, you use your hands very often in a lot of your work. Um, this one really explicitly, and you have said, uh, human lives begin and end with hands. When babies are born, they are caught or lifted and held by hands. When elders die, we close our eyes with hands. Um, this particular artwork was um, you know, made uh, 12 years ago now, and it was when you were searching for an artistic language um, in a context a highly censored context. Um, so I wanted to ask you how this work, um, which somehow is a sign language of its own, um, one that we is a bit playful, but indecipherable, uh, we can't necessarily all understand. Um, can you speak about how this work um, communicates in your context? Yeah. The I was uh, started to do art in 2005, so like 16 years ago. I oh, know, yeah. And the when I started to do most of my hours are dealing with my hand. Yeah, because uh, yeah, when I was young, like my man used to tell me my finger is a little bit longer than other, and then I have very flexible finger. So when I was young, I always look at my 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 hand, and then. My finger, so I, I thought that I would be became the artist when I'm the deaf. So and also like when I started to do the art, so I I was also trying to choose uh, what kind of subject should I deal in with that. So I think okay, I I pick at the my 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 hand is as a the, the main main subject in in my award. So and the this piece uh, F and F face and finger, I uh, I developed uh, during my residency in in Rimbun de Han in Malaysia. So I got the two man residency in two thousand eight. So as a as a performer artist, so I have not really have nothing to do for everyday practice. Like like a bit dif different from the uh, painter or the the the, the other. Uh, artist, yeah, for me. So I, I, am thinking, oh, what, what should I do during my, uh, to my residency? How can I carry the time? And so I was thinking, okay, my, maybe I, I will try to develop with the, 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 the hand position will be combined with the my face, because the, uh, this idea I got. Uh, I, I got that, that idea during I was in a monastery for a temporary month. So because I, I used to have a very, very long hair, like six, six years I didn't get after I uh, high school. So and then so the, the, my hair is very long and then so the one day I have I have to be there the month for, for the family occasion. So my my, my family uh, forced me to do to do be be the man monk for a while. Yeah, because this is all all the practice in the uh, uh, Buddhism in here. We were like if if you are man, so you have to be the the man for, for a while in your life. Yeah. And also that 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 will be also the the same pressure for the uh, parent as well. Well, if if you have Sam, so you your son will be the monk, so your your the you will be called to the heaven or some something like that, yeah, yeah. So so the 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 parent believe in that. So I I'm not in the re religious part person, but I I want to become the my my parent happy. So that's why I I cut my hair and then 
So I, I began a month for, for a while, a, a week, yeah? So, and then when I was in the monastery, I, I look at in the mirror and then it is a big thing to me because like Sigia, the long hair, and then so now it's no hair and then the bow hair. So I was looking at to my face and then so I was try to play with, with, with my finger. I think the during that 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 time I, I got the point for the okay maybe I can be one day I will be making the the, the my, my 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 performance with the hand movement and then the combined with the face. So that is why uh, during the my residency period, so I I try to find the the five to ten uh, position of the hand combined with the face. So the 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 most came from my my childhood memory, and then the same same can be dance dance mudra. Same can be my my childhood. So I I was combined with all the things. That some of the position have a meaning. Some of have a no meaning. So I I try to be combined with that meaning and meaningless uh uh like position with with my hand, and also that one is. Uh, that was not really uh, given the uh, answer, and then also that's also the also the as to the question to the audience. So uh, you guys can, can be interact with your the that that hand position with your own background or so, uh, some something like that. Yeah. So and I. I think I was like uh, 10 days to uh, two weeks to try to uh, develop this beat. So uh, after I got all, all the sequence, and then got, yeah, sometimes you know that because my, this beat also like the, is it like the, the flow is very uh, smooth, yeah? So not like changing like this and this, yeah? So that, that, that is why the, some of the position this and this, between that I put some uh, transition, the, the, the hand movement inside. So that, that is why I took the uh, like two weeks long for the, 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 uh, the vlog. So at the time I got the uh, small digital camera, like two, two megapixel one, so in, in 2008. So I, I was uh, re record all my hand movement. And then also I, I tried to re remember all, all the movement of, of, of the sequence, yeah? So, and then after that, I was uh, first uh, showing my, my piece in the uh, Malaysia in June, the, one of the uh, Myanmar artists came the uh, make an exhibition in the Malaysia. And so, so, so he, he invited me for doing uh, the opening performance. Yeah, so I, I was planning to collaborate with the, uh, the one uh, musician. So that's be sometimes I I try to collaborate with the musician. Sometimes I do my uh, alone, yeah. And uh, uh, today I uh, today is a big silent the the the, the performance. Uh, but most of the time, so I I was uh, using the the Wuse song from from my mouth because all all the all the thing uh, generate from. From, from my body and then also in in the live live performance so I, I try to be approach the orient and then ask them to can you do like that can you do this position but uh, in in this zone performance so I I didn't have to ask them because you you guys also like follow my 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 movement and that's why I, I didn't say and 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 any words and I just keep on doing the uh, the the sequence yeah but i'm i'm not sure that that will be all the 108 position because uh sometimes i i cannot remember all the position i just like uh, like uh, do the improvise and yeah so that can be less than 100 or less than so i i don't mind that 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 the how many sequence yeah because not really like uh, you have to do for follow all all your sequence because I, I, I need to uh, follow with, with my, my mind and then so I, I do some in, improvise as well, yeah? Yeah, thank you. Thank you.
uh, Mossad. I'm going to, I have follow-up questions, but I first would like to have uh, Tunmint um, engage. You, you just met each other and um, you share in common uh, different points of history in your country. Um, so Tun, if you could go ahead and introduce, um, yeah, your thoughts and your questions are welcome. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Um, the two performances were really powerful. Uh, powerful in the sense, um, Gomosad's performance was really tying to only one he explained uh, uh, to answer the question. Uh, powerful in the sense of based on the agency and also the experience uh, uh, as a child. And, and agency in the sense of what you have. And that seemed to be the theme of the life of uh, Burmese people as well. It's, it, it, during the uh, 1988 movement, when I was a high school student and started the uh, student activism uh, from high school. And up until now, 2021, uh, the, the movement in Burma being unfolded. But Choi Yi Tain, I have seen uh, your performance at the Art of Revolution, uh, Art of Revolution events, uh, 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 broadcast live every Friday from San Francisco. Uh, so this is a, a new one that I had not seen before. Uh, so it's such a, a powerful uh, movement. I think you were saying the fascist militaries, uh, the roots of fascist military has to be cut. And that's sequence in sequence in demonstrating the if, if you will, a suffering or the, uh, the other side torturing uh, event. Uh, this is such a powerful, it brought me uh, to 1988 in March of uh, 1988. Uh, 1988, uh, March, there was a student, a engineering student who um, was in Yangon and uh, wrote a poem. A uh, poem was uh, titled To My Mother. Uh, the poem, what I read, I was in high school, I, I read it, um, uh, I got it. I, I got it from a uh, post office, uh, um, the uh, bulletin boat type of place, and I, I took it and I, I read it. And the poem was written by this student, Gopomo Upomo. Uh, he was shot dead um, in a student uh, uprising near um, Rangoon Institute of Technology. But his poem was um, uh, telling his mother uh, that he came from the rural area of Burma. Now he's in Yangon. And he began to observe the society like an artist, if you will, or a poet. And he was saying uh, society he encountered in the city was sort of morally weak, uh, not really sound and highly corrupted and unjust condition of economic activities are everywhere. Uh, economics uh, lives are everywhere. And so each stanza he devoted to those kind of condition to bring up it to the other words, if you will. And he framed that, and that poem really brought me to the uh, to 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 a more uh, engaging with the 1988 movement. And this uh, uh, 2021 movement, I had a few um, uh, images that I want to share. What I saw in the early days of the maybe four uh, four four images, and so I will screen share. Uh, see if you can see it. Um, So can you see this uh, uh, picture uh, painting, everyone? Yes. Yeah, we'll so see that. When I saw this, this I think this was posted in one of the Twitter uh, from Myanmar, a citizen journalist posted it. And uh, at first I thought, wow, Don San Suu Kyi was walking on the street. And <laughs> then I looked at the small phone screen. I had to close up, look at it. And then so here a painter, uh, was working with his painting or her painting. I am not sure he or she looked like he. Uh, uh, so, and now she, she was under house arrest and I'm looking at the moon and dreaming for freedom uh, as people would walk uh, at night in Yangon's the street, street markets and so on. So that was really a powerful uh, display of art right in the protest, in the midst of the protests that were going on. Uh, here is the second picture. Uh, this is uh, um, giant bamboo plates uh, used by farmers to sort out uh, trees and um, you know, branches and leaves and stone from crops they will be um, storing. So this is a rural um, sort of a 
plates are used in farm by farmers, but here are teachers are uh, holding these plates as a form of art with different colors painted. And also obviously uh, in English as well here, reject the military and so on. So th this was really a, a very creative uh, use of uh, what you would call it items that, that is available like Gomosa's hand in your hand, or this in this instance, the daily use uh, material is nothing really special, but you, you bring that into a message uh, from their life uh, so these are kind of uh, really interesting and it caught my attention. And then um, chefs, uh, like uh, culinary artists uh, from different restaurants, hotel. And this one, one thing was in Mandalay. Uh, they were on the roadside uh, joining the protest by curving watermelons. And then some of the tables are, has, has some other fruits and then some flower, but they were making messages uh, through these uh, artistic uh, um, expressions. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, art was playing a role. Um, finally, um, this, this artist, I don't know. I, I saw this in, again in Twitter and Facebook uh, posted by citizen journalists or citizens. Um, this one was really powerful defining Dama versus uh, Adama, um, uh, just uh, versus unjust or fair uh, versus unfairness. Um, this, this could not be as clear than uh, I, I, I can't write it as clear as this, this painting uh, was describing the feeling, uh, the movement, uh, 2021 democracy movement that led by Gen Z. Um, so this, uh, this painting uh, is, is just powerful. Um, you can be in many ways uh, you, you like. And I do have a video clip, but the video clip was basically defining the um, unjust um, I'm not going to show because the, the sound doesn't come through. It, it was a Michael Jackson's uh, sound. Um, uh, the sound that Michael Jackson had was, um, they, they don't care about us. They don't care about us. I think maybe some of you who know Michael Jackson sounds <laughs> in him when he was alive. Uh, so uh, they don't care about us. They don't care about us. That sound, but it was Gen Z, about 20 youth in the middle of Yangon on the, on the street and block off and then the audience was surrounding them and they were singing it. And then uh, at the beginning, they were saying, you know, the, the military leader, uh, the coup leader, may online, uh, F you, uh, is sort of like that. And they were expressing, nobody care about us. They don't care about us. And that was a Michael Jackson singing in behind, but they were performing. So sort of body performance art in that, uh, but because the sound doesn't cut through it. So in that sense, I think the artist uh, used the power of imagination to poke at the emotions of the uh, public at large. And the power of imagination that you have displayed blow me away, especially uh, the Choi uh, uh, piece, uh, your, your sound, your movement. Uh, I, I, can't I can't express, I don't have good words to really describe the power of your movement and your, your sound. How did you come up with that idea? Uh, and and I, I guess the source, the, the inspiration may have been quite clear from the performance, but I was stunned uh, to just watch. And uh, how did you come up with, share, share with us what made you create that piece uh, and uh, share with, uh, with, with, with us today? I think you are still muted. Yeah, uh, I'm so grateful to meet you, Dr. Tomian, and of course, my, my friends, Mozart. And yes, um, since I'm away from home, uh, since 2009, 10, uh, I always feel guilty, like, you know, I'm away from home and I thought I couldn't do anything for my country. So I always follow the news about Burma, even I'm living outside. So, and then also I have a chance to meet with the former political prisoners in the United States. And I'm always curious about how they've been spending and sacrificed their lives to fight for the freedom, you know, uh, uh, for the country. So whenever they, they uh, uh, told me about their experience, how they've been, you know, uh, living, you know, with the torture and, you know, many years in imprisonment. So every time, whenever I listen to their story, 
the kind of torture is, you know, I found out body works. As I'm a performance artist, we use our body as a medium. So I found out that is like, you know, I don't want to say beautiful, right? This is a very bitter, but, you know, kind of expression to uh, express what you want to say and, you know, how you've been, you know, uh, fighting back to, to you know, uh, for, your, for what you believe and for your country. So, and then I, one day I got the idea about uh, their body works as, a, as I'm a performance artist. I really want to do something for them. And plus, I really want to honor them the way they are, you know, uh, 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 spending their life in prison and sacrifice for their, you know, beliefs. So then I start to uh, uh, study uh, how the body, I mean, they torture their bodies. So, and then I take the six <laughs> torture, which I can do. So, and then I pick this six. So my answer is, I just want to honor them because mm -hmm. uh, uh, they are hero for me because, you know, who can be, I mean, spent in the prison with under like brutally torture, you know, like that. So, but luckily they are out of the you know, prison and they're released from prison and they're still alive. So for me is to honor those people and then to, to found out what is the beauty of, you know, the body works for your beliefs. So that is very simple. So that's what I want to, yeah, share. That's why I started that performance since 2010. And I've been telling to Irene, like, you know, I thought I don't need to do that performance, you know, again. So then I started that performance, I mean, doing that performance since uh, uh, NLD win the election in 2015. And when we get back our, you know, I mean, people elected government ruling. So I've been even, you know, stop that performance. And then I thought like, I don't need to do it anymore because my country is moving forward. Mm -hmm. But suddenly in February 1st, the military coup, and I was so sad. And then when I get opportunity, this is my very first time ever uh, doing, I mean, my performance after several years later. So I have to say thank you to Irene, you know, give me this chance to share my experience. And also nowadays, there are so many political prisoners, including, you know, under 18 years old. So when you go to the AAPBB website, you will see thousands, thousands, uh, in, uh, I mean, prison, uh, 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 prisoners uh, facing, you know, trial. So I just want to honor them. And I would like to be in this revolution as I'm a performance artist, whatever I can do, I, I would like to do. Thank you. Uh, I would like to add one thing. The make sure you wear the prison uniform. That's the old one, the, yeah. the, the white one. And then the, the, and in 2010, they, they, they changed the, the uniform. This is what, what I wear now, the, the, the blue one. Yeah. So today I especially wear the, uh, the, the prison clothes because I, I also just uh, uh, released from prison uh, recently, mm -hmm. the couple of months ago. And also I was put special, the, the three finger, the, the, the salute for, from the, uh, our, the Supreme uh, Revolution movement, yeah. Because the, like the, I think that, that the military government uh, hate us to show that the uh, three finger side. So, so, so that is why they, they, they changed the sentence for the uh, five fight uh, for, for, the pol for the political prisoner, the, 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 the law of the 505, uh, 505A. Mm -hmm. So that, that one, uh, like uh, before, the two uh, before the February 1st, so that law is like uh, the highest sentence is only two year sentence. So and then like a week okay. after or some 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 day after they, they could take the power, well, they they extend the three to uh, two two to three year. Yeah. So that that, that is why I uh, uh, some of my colleagues got the uh, three year uh, sentence. Yeah, because the that that was in the from the uh, uh, martial law area. In, in, in Yangon, there's a city, uh, township, uh, the martial law area. Uh, whoever got the arrested from that area, uh, you, you can invoke 
any movement or some, sometimes if, if you didn't in, involve that, but you guys can be charged there three years sentence. Yeah, because I, I was staying with, with that, uh, the, the, the prison. Yeah, so that's why today I, I was the, the, the my clothes also dedicated to the, uh, the political prisoner. So, so I was released and then also some of my, my, my colleagues uh, re released the, 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 the a couple of days ago, but uh, set, there is also stay some in the uh, uh, prison. Yeah, they did not release all, all the political prisoners yet, yeah. Thank you, Mosa. I have many questions, but I would uh, like to hear a question from the audience and maybe also have uh, from Aaron. I think we should move to the audience. It would be great to hear their questions. We can go, we can go there. I think Peter will be moderating um, the question. So I'm I'm waiting for questions to come in, um, but uh, I I don't like to allow a vacuum. I like to step in. And so I'll ask a question. Um, what about the role of the diaspora of people who have left uh, Myanmar uh, and are living in the US or are living in Australia or living in Bangladesh? Um, how are people in the diaspora besides creating art as, as you have Choi, um, what, what are the ways that people in the diaspora are participating in the uh, movement for democracy and freedom in Myanmar? You know, this time the military guy you know, that is uh, what they didn't know about this revolution. At one point, since 1988, because of them, we Burmese are, you know, spread out, you know, all over the world as a refugee. And this time we all come together to fight back them. And we've been doing whatever we can do from outside. Fundraising with art, or with poem, whatever we can do, we've been doing, you know? So, so I think that Dr. Tomye even can more explain, you know, because he's also one of the, you know, I mean, professor who've been involved in the community. We have, you know, every week we have a meeting and we've been, you know, uh, uh, giving some advice and what's happening, what we can help. So we are from different countries, you know, we have a lot of, I mean, networking and to supporting our NUG government, giving better idea, giving whatever we can do. So that is what the military didn't know, how diaspora is powerful to support and to end up this military, I mean, regime. So Dr. Tumin, I really welcome. So please <laughs> edit up something, your comments. What I can say is the military leaders this time who staged a coup on February 1st underestimated the passion, the power, and commitment of the previous generation of democracy uh, uh, movement participants. I will use that way. Um, you can see in St. Paul, we have Korean community, uh, California, New York, San Francisco, uh, in Europe, New Zealand, South Korea, migrant workers in South Korea, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, all of them are participating by donating money and time uh, uh, in a way like these two great artists are uh, doing around the, the world through Zooms, Facebooks, and so on. Um, I also uh, co-founded the Mutual Aid Myanmar, mutualaidmyanmar.org. If you go to mutualaidmyanmar.org, you can also participate in uh, the, the powerful movement uh, in a way that you can easily do. Um, 
So the CDM, which is the civil disobedient movement participants are critical for, critical for denying the success of the military council to function as a government, meaning the civil servants worked out of their offices and position in denying to work under the military. So mutual aid Myanmar is, for instance, supplying a lost income, uh, food and medicine and so on. So these are kind of uh, as in the, uh, and, then, and then you have now the deeper uh, defense forces, which are PDFs in Myanmar, who are engaging in all kind, all means possible to, to overthrow the military leader. And there are fundraiser groups uh, participating in that and so on. And weekly uh, event like the Art of Revolution and Facebook event like this. And all of these are uh, such a powerful. And it would, could not, I could not imagine in 1988 when I had never seen a cell phone or myself, I had not talked on a phone yet at that time, not seen a phone in my life <laughs> as I was high school student. But this time we have internet and global community like this. So that's what is what's going on. Uh, and, and it's just, inspiring just to see. We have now 80 countries, donors from 80 countries, 700,000 in 10 months donated to Mutual Aid Myanmar, for instance, right? So those are kind of the, just on the surface of what uh, the entire diaspora and Burmese people in exile are doing. Uh, there are several excellent questions from the audience. I'm reading yes. the room there. Um, I would like to get, uh, I think Sarah Peterson uh, ask a question about um, uh, how you two artists feel now uh, at the moment uh, uh, that the, the coup is ongoing and the crisis is unfolding. Uh, prisoners are in the prisons and appropriately you are still wearing prisoner's uniform for most said as a, as a prisoner to, to, to really uh, literally define the people's feeling in Burma. Uh, people, 54 million people feel like probably the same that they live in a gigantic prison uh, in, in 2021. Uh, so that's that's just really a powerful, uh, powerful that, that you're making it. And how do you feel uh, as as a Burmese, as an individual, as an artist? How do you feel now? That was a question uh, here. And the symbols are so powerful. And so maybe as a touch upon that, uh, the utilization of symbols and your feelings and your uh, performances and so on. Almost said all. Yeah, um, so, okay. Yeah. So I would like to say one day that the coup this happened. So, and then the, some of the my friends flee to uh, other country and ran away. And also, the, I, I got arrested. And also, the, the, nowadays, the, the, some, some of our friends in the forest to learn how to use the gun and the fight back with military. Some are stay in the prison. So for for me, when I when I uh, released from a uh, politic uh, uh, prison, I was thinking, what should I do? So I was, uh, should I join to forest to fight back and then, or should I flee to other country to stay? And then should I stay in here? So I I decide that. So I will be uh, stay in my country. So I I will not uh, run away from the uh, country. And then so I and also I I'm thinking to. There's some of my, my colleagues stay in the prison, so that's why I need to support to them. So, so since the, I released from the uh, prison the four, four months ago, yeah, and so I, every week, like once or twice a, a week, I've been to the prison and send the send, uh, food and the, the money to, 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 to some of my uh, uh, colleagues, yeah, so every week, yeah, so and so and uh, stay in here is uh, uh, yeah. So pe pe uh, when the people run away, they say their their life is a uh, uh, danger. They cannot live and the, the life is at risk. Yeah, but but uh, the living here also the uh, uh, you are uh, living with the risk. Yeah, so you are not really safe. But we can be uh, for for me what I think is so. This is a. Uh, the, the, that even is only happened in your life one time. So you have to be working at this weekend. If you are go away, you will be not with the weakness of the, that, that uh, moment. So I, I want to see with my own eye. So I don't want to see that even with the true with the media or the same social media or some, something like that. So that, that's why I, I, I'm staying here. So and then, so and also, 
uh, we are staying there, uh, uh, joined the uh, CDM movement. We didn't pay the electric bill. So, so send the uh, February. So, but uh, I put all, all the uh, uh, barely uh, electric bill uh, money in the one envelope. So, and then uh, me and my, my, my wife think, okay, we will be give, give, give the money when the, 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 the government, our the government will be bad. So we will be give back that, that all the money to the uh, electric, uh, the department or some, something like this, yeah? Yeah. So, and also uh, whenever uh, we go to the uh, restaurant, so we say, uh, we will not not pay the uh, test for the food, yeah. So, if if you count the uh, the the food that we will not eat here. So 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 so, so that that's why the CDM movement has stayed the the the, the, the strong. So but for me, so I, I will stay here and then the, the try to wake up with my own eye what is happening in here, and yeah. So for me, as for me, so I'm always, you know, ready, ready to speak out who cannot speak or who cannot bring the voices with my art or with my, you know, however, whatever I can do. So that's my, you know, and uh, 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 my job. And then also this military must end this time. So I wake up with that mindset I sleep with that mindset, how I can end it up this evil. So that's my job. So I'm involving in community and I've been, you know, working with the, I mean, together, whatever I can do, I always get my hand. So that is, you know, so I always be good to, you know, work on it. So because this time we have to end it up this evil. That, that's it. Thank you. It's a determination of uh, people in Burma as well, and I yeah. share the spirit and that that uh, and it, it is 2021, and the civil war in Burma is 73 years, the longest civil war uh, that, and because of that, uh, the 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 lack of freedom for especially artists of all different ethnic background, different culture, different lifestyles were have been oppressed not just from under this military but has been over uh, due to the culture the majority the burman the buddhist nationalist extreme sense of the group uh, governing it so I, I think people are very determined to end that and that was also crafted artistically uh, in a, in a in a bad <laughs> in a, in, a, in a, their own way in the, the politics is out of possible in that sense and they have crafted this uh, this their their power in that sense so um, with that, I, I have a question to both of you, which is the emotion, the, prob the, the, the issue of emotion and Burmese culture. Uh, in Burmese culture, you are sort of uh, in a sort of traditional culture. Uh, you are sort of um, not to express too much of your emotion. Uh, and uh, you are also allowed to do imagination, but imagination is sort of a limited way because Imagination without expression is really nothing. I mean, it will be just inside your 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 body and your bones, <laughs> if you will, right? So, imagination require the expression, the emotion have to come out, right? And Burmese culture, in some way, uh, kind of disallow that uh, or dis in discourage that. And that's uh, how how do you, as an artist in Burma, especially the question related to one of you as here in the chat. I think it was uh, Any Ananya. Who has a question about um, uh, the how how do you um, um, let me see the question uh, how do you how do you how do you how do you perform your performance uh, Como said especially you are now performing for us on the screen from your living room uh, we are closely able to view it but for a larger audience in Burma in Myanmar how are you able to uh, use your art to show the the people at large uh, with you know uh, some of whom may not have an uh, internet or Zoom access. So are you just doing this performance uh, exclusively on online on Zoom, or are you producing YouTube posts, or how are you performing your art? That was a question. So the first one was about emotion, and second one was uh, uh, how do you use your art? 
to, to showcase? Yeah, so I will answer the second one first. So actually, I didn't do any art since the uh, could got the power, so February. So that is why, so I'm not really uh, ready to make the new performance or other performance in, in the public. And also this is, this is not the uh, right, right time to do, do the art. So we have something to do as, yeah. So, but this, this is an event. So the, the you, you guys in, invite me in. So uh, they asked ask me to do the uh, re-performance re this piece. So that, that is why I, I was, uh, the the agree with, okay I I will not I I have no I I idea for do do new piece so I, I can be uh, re reperform my old piece like over 10, 10 years ago yeah yeah so the the emotion yeah so and then so like uh I got the kind of train to how to calm my emotion so this is what oh, how I got that experience during the uh uh in the prison. So because I I I used to have a, a train the uh, how to meditate find the uh uh, uh going up. So and then so when I was pre uh prison so I the so the, the everyday life is same and so so and then I was a big uh uh, not really happy, so that's why I I asked my my wife to uh, could you send 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 the book uh, from our uh, my 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 uh, book chef so the 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 uh, ongoing book so the uh, ten day of uh, meditation the, the the quote so I I was uh, re re read and then I I I practiced the the the, the meditation again in in prison so that 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 is how I live in the prison and also. So after that, so I, I also the uh, till now so there's a, a, a morning and then night night time I every day I I, I did uh, practice the uh, meditation and so so that's why uh, we not really high to our emotion yeah but you know the as as a, a, a constituent artist so the emotion is not the not the issue to dealing with that. So you can be the, uh, because if, if, if you are dealing with the uh, emotional stuff for me, like very uh, 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 romantic or some, something like that, yeah. But, but if you are in other, other level, you, you can be uh, uh, like uh, use the emotion with the uh, conceptually way. So there's like calm and yeah, so and then not really, uh the more my my wall is not really given to the uh people who will be angry or happy or something like that. Because, uh uh my wall is uh mostly dealing with the a lot of layer so like muddy layer and then not with the uh singular meaning for for that the 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 war and then there's a like diverse uh meaning so orient can be interact with that did the the, I, I always say say that art is not like up one plus one equal to if if it very sudden why we have to be do do the art so, so we, we can be and also the, the art, art is not only given to the uh message yeah so if you want to be give the message why why not you write the one one message one line or two line and then write down and then showing that message to the other audience why we have to be do the art yeah so so art art is a uh, more more than that yeah so so and then so the that the the the, the message or the will, will be the we have to be uh try to find uh try to uh interpret all the meaning of of, of this piece all together yeah so so the the artist is not not only given to the uh um uh, 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 uh question to the and answer to the audience so or audience and artists will be combined and then we all try to find the meaning of the Ah, yeah, so that's my question. Yeah, for me is uh, oh, drive. Uh, 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 let me edit up uh, what the Moses said. Nowadays, 
most of the artists are stopping their artwork because they have a commitment like we will not do or create any art under this situation because we are together with who are running away from home who are you know who their house is burning and especially in chin states kind of people are you know sacrifice and you know uh getting i mean trouble by military so we are saying we want to show like solidarity like showing up that we are also in the same uh, situation that's why most of the artists stop you know they are singing stop they are you know painting most of them so me either but uh, in this uh, events is really related to you know speak out what's happening in burma what's happening in you know uh, uh, our people. So my performance also really directly related to, you know, the, what's happening in Burma in prison, the notorious, you know, prison, how they've been torturing me. You will hear all the news about, you know, they arrested today and next day they will return the dead body. So those kind of things happen. So I need to speak out, you know, what's happening there and what is the real situation with my art. So, so far about it, emotion is my emotions always really, you know, related to my, I mean, you know, uh, never stop myself. If I needed to speak out, I just speak out. If I needed to, you know, stop, I just stop. So it's really, you know, you know, I don't really have that control. So maybe sometime I might be uh, opposite to what uh, Burmese culture. So as I'm, uh, you know, <laughs> want to be a free thinker and free, you know, live to free world. And so I always connect with the audience and, uh, you know, the situation around me, what I need to do, what I have to say. So that's very simple. Thank you. Thank you, Choi. A, a question has come in that I think asks you about the specific choices that you made in putting your performance piece together. Mm -hmm. So the Beth asks about the different sound and body responses to the objects that you've used, how you selected those objects and the order that you've put them in for us to watch you engage with them, moving from what might be toys to things that we recognize as shackles, the food and water that you can't eat or drink, the bucket of water where you are waterboarded or waterboard yourself. Um, how did you choose these particular objects and the order in which you engaged with them so as i mentioned in the earlier or i pick it i pick a uh, six uh torture which i can do in the 15 minutes uh even you know i try to do that kind of i mean choose that kind of a uh, torture my body is so much pain after you know my performance so sometimes i have to like uh, uh, two days and three days muscle pain. So I always remind me of how the real torture, a real time, how many days, I do just 15 minutes, but for them is, you know, days and nights and days and nights until they got the, uh, I mean, answer what they want. So myself also want to show the solidarity, like, you know, they got that kind of, I mean, a situation or torture. So I want to share a little bit whatever I can. So for the toy is just symbol, like, you know, I would like to, uh, 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 I would like the audience see, you know, what I'm really doing. So that is just, uh, you know, a uh, symbol about, you know, to uh, relate it to my performance, my body movements. So it just added up some, you know, interesting things. So very simple, not special. Thank yeah. you. Share yeah, from the book. So yeah. Thank so you. you so I there. would like to add one yeah. one thing. So how yes. the Myanmar artists uh, live in inside the Myanmar. So I would like to quote one of the uh the our senior, the poet, poet. one, the same shot. So the so I will read it. So little bro. Little bro, we will never flee. So we were not free. This is our truth. Little bro, now you have invisible one. We have visible one. Little bro, bro. Let it bread, bread. So it's never be kind of water. Fine, Latin. Thank you.
Thank you. So I want to ask a question of the three of you, of Cha A and Mosat, and also of Professor Tun Mint. Um, one of the ways that authorities have remained in power in Myanmar or Burma has been by playing ethnic groups against each other. And I wonder how you see in this movement today against the military, how, have, how has solidarity been developed linking different groups who might once have either had little to do with each other or even been hostile to each other. How is this a multi-ethnic movement in Myanmar? My answer is simple. That is also a question. Uh, do you want to end up this regime or not? Very simple. If you want to end it up, we have to fight together. We, have, we need to unite. So they are evil. They will not stop. They are powerful because they have a weapons. We don't have a weapon, but now we are, you know, we're choosing, you know, not only the nonviolence, we are choosing many different ways to fight back and to end it up. So I always ask them like, how do you want to live, you know? So that's a very simple. So if you want to end it up, if you want to live like as you wish, let's do that. Very simple, but sometimes very hard, you know, everyone has everyone, you know, different idea. So, but, you know, at least if we have the same goal, we can do it. But we have to work hard. It's not easy. So we have to accept the, what is the reality. Yes, thank you. Como <laughs> Yeah, in the um, uh, I have some uh, academic uh, the artist, so and also said some 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 young artist. So and then uh, uh, recently the the uh, some artists uh, they they are doing the kind of uh, residency in the in the kitchen area like I IDB camp. So like two. Two weeks ago, the, some of my my friends, so nan 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 bummies and some some bummies artists, uh, go go to the uh, kitchen ITB can and uh, doing some workshop and uh, some some try to do some art movement in there. So now 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 they are in in that a area. Yeah, the, for me like I, I I haven't been been to other. Other state yet, yeah. So because I only born in Yango and then I I grew up in here. So I I I only have a chance to travel other countries. I I didn't have a chance to travel inside my my own country, yeah. So that's why I not really had familiar with what what is happening in 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 that other area, yeah, yeah. So I I I a bit get, getting my my set as a like bummies bummies. Uh, artist, yeah. So. so, so one of the positive outcome of the atrocities that we are seeing and reading and observing in Burma, uh, especially in cities and town where majority Burmese or Burman ethnic majority live, uh, the positive outcome is here. This is uh, the Rohingya. Um, uh, genocide or Rohingya case was in 2017 at the height and ethnic minorities who have been uh, fighting against this centralized monocentric military power for some of whom are fighting 73 years and some of them 69 years, depending on which year you count. Uh, the now Burma majority themselves begin to realize and literally, practically, ethnic villagers' houses have been burned down for seven, some, 70 some years, 69 years, if you will. And recently, just Rohingya were just 
pushed out of their villages, burned down their villages. And now it is happening to Burman ethnic majorities area in, in the cities, in, in, in Yangon, in Mandalay, in Bagol, uh, Zagai. Zagai is the deep Burman area. So the one positive outcome is among the majority Burman begin to realize the eventual threat to their agency and freedom is military dictatorship or fascist military as uh, Choi Feng illustrated in her performance. And that determination is a point of unity. I think that I, sh I would agree that everybody now in Burma, uh, in whatever village you may live or street you may live, they are all united to end military dictatorship forever and to seek permanent peace that is much required and much needed to, to create inclusive, open federal uh, government and country. So if you look at the national unity government and the composition of the national unity government, it is at least in the history of Burmese government their organization, you had never seen such a diverse group of people mm -hmm. leading this, uh, this national unity government. Uh, the military is a very afraid of it. And so uh, powerful artists from all background and uh, all ethnic backgrounds are performing. And I have seen several of them performing uh, online and so on. So this is a unity that the people in Burma uh, are seeking and, and the goal is quite unifying and determination is just inspiring. Thank you. Um, Mosat, who is the young man who keeps appearing in your screen, would he? Uh, my son. <laughs> would he like to introduce himself? <laughs> you can introduce okay. Himself. Hello. I am Akia. I am seven. It's very nice to meet you. Do you know we are all on the other side of the world here in the United States? <laughs> Akia, we're so glad to meet you. I'm glad to meet you too. Thank you. Tableau. Thank you. Um, I want to turn things. Thank you, Mosat. Um, I want to turn things over to Erin um, to let us all know what else is happening um, with these two wonderful artists this weekend in our community. Erin. Thank you. Am I unmuted? Thank you, Peter. Um, so, uh, Professor Tunman, thank you for facilitating uh, Peter as well, and um, Mossad and, and Cha for that really, really wonderful um, discussion, insightful discussion. Um, always some humor from Mossad, thank you as well. <laughs> so, this uh, residency is um, Cha's with us for just over a week here in the Twin Cities, and Mossad as well, even though uh, remotely. We're engaging in a number of events. And so um, this is the first. And if you are here in St. Paul, and for those of us at the library, if we go out the door and take a left, we are on Payne Avenue. Um, Second Shift Studio Space is one of our collaborators um, for this residency, and they're hosting an exhibition of actually these two works. Um, so it's a, it's a public facing exhibition, um, Body Sequencing Solidarity, uh, the videos of these two works are in the window, um, I believe, 24 hours over the next three days. So come and take a walk uh, in this winter spring weather um, and see the exhibition at Second Shift Studio Space. Um, tomorrow night, um, there is a live performance with Cha E, a new work uh, at uh, a combined new and existing work at Dream Song which is an art space in North Minneapolis, Northeast Minneapolis. Um, and I wanna thank Dream Song Cloudhouse Residency for hosting um, Cha E in their space during, uh, during her stay. Um, tomorrow, it, it's not a public um, program, but it is a community workshop um, at the Urban Village, which is again, just a couple streets over here on the east side. The Urban Village works um, with Karen, community, um, but also multi-ethnic communities from Myanmar. So there's a community workshop um, with their community from here and also other parts of the Midwest. Um, Cha is doing an artist talk and also a movement workshop. 
Um, Mossad will also follow um, next weekend with um, his own um, artist talk, and we will be uh, working on a very similar uniform together with all the participants um, with permission to screen print our own prison uniforms. Um, so we're really excited for that community workshop as well. Um, yeah, so um, um, yeah, those are the those are the activities, a lot of activities. Um, I also want to thank the University of Minnesota um, who has engaged Chai in a couple of classes over the last week as well. So yeah, so I have to edit up one thing. So I saw the question about how we can support the artists. We've been establishing an uh, register ENCA, we call ENCA, uh, Association for Myanmar Contemporary Art. Mozart also the co-founder. So we've been establishing that organization based in New York, and you can donate some money to support CDM artists and uh, artists inside Burma. So me and Mo and uh, maybe at least we are like 30 to 40 artists working together inside and outside the country uh, to happen that organization. Now I'm uh, still waiting to get the uh, 501c3, but uh, we've got the registration number, so we have a bank account too. <laughs> and just want to announce, so we have that, you know, successfully we organize, I mean, establish that organization uh, to help our, our, our friends in Burma. And also we have a many plans ahead of, uh, I mean, uh, ahead of it. And we really want to uh, go the anchor as an institution. So we have uh, many groups now, we are saying like departments, we have a research group and we have an archive group, we have a publication. We artists are really ready to go and using this situation as a reform everything, you know, we, we, we would like to. I mean, uh, to to develop even our art world. So please help us, and uh, you can also help. You know, uh, you can go to the Association for Myanmar Contribu or, or maybe you can contact with me or more. Then that we can uh, answer whatever question or whatever donation we can arrange. Or maybe you can contact to Irene. <laughs> yeah. Plus, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us too. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So I wanna remind everyone that uh, there will be an archived video of tonight's performances and this conversation uh, that will show up on the Eastside Freedom Library YouTube page. Uh, thanks to our colleague, Carla Reilly, uh, who's been central to organizing the tech. Um, and I think I'm going to end I, after listening to your last comments, uh, Cha, um, by quoting Bertolt Brecht. Uh, and Brecht said, art is not a mirror, but a hammer with which to shape reality. And, and tonight, I think we have had a very good introduction to the way artists in Myanmar are using their art as a hammer to shape reality. And we're so thankful for your work. Hope that you stay well and safe um, and that we see each other in a better time in a better world. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. Good night, Ikea. <laughs>